CloudDB, shaping your new normal. Welcome everyone to the 2021 APEC Groundbreakers Virtual Tour by Apaco UC. This year, our event will be the biggest one ever done with 144 sessions, including normal sessions, workshops, and hands-on labs from 100 different speakers over 17 days. Also, it will cover sessions in four different languages. Please remember to register to as many sessions as you can. This way, we'll be, uh, we will have access to the replays uh, until December 30 through the platform. I would like to say thanks to our Oracle user groups in Java user groups that made this event possible, and also to our sponsors, Oracle Groundbreakers and your main sponsor, CloudDB. Now for today's session, Converged Database is the Oracle best kept secret by Rich Nimic. Please feel free to write questions at any time during the session by using the chat tab of live webinar on the top lower corner of your screen. And the speaker will be answering your questions as soon as possible or at the end of the session. If there is any issues during the presentation, please feel free to contact me at any time by using the same chat window in the right lower corner of your screen. Now, without any more delays, I would like to leave you with this amazing session by Rich Nimic. Rich, the room is yours. Hey, thank you so much, Francisco, and great to be here. Uh, one of the best conferences you will come to. I mean, these guys really put on a great conference. And I'll tell you, you want to look at all the sessions that are out there and make sure you don't miss anything. I always thought something that Larry Ellison said that was quite profound, and I always try to remember this, is he says, every day you should learn something, every day you should teach something. So I'm going to try to teach a few things and make sure you ask some questions here and there so that I can learn from you as well and hear your experiences. Uh, we're going to focus on three different areas of which Neaton Van Gogh occur has written one of them. Jim Saprinsky has written one of them, and I've written kind of the lion's share of this particular session on Converge Database, but I want to thank them for all that they've given to this as well. Uh, Oracle does have a safe harbor statement that you have to keep in mind as well, which there it is, when they do write some things to present. So the CEO is always worrying about how do I get to be more data-driven? The CIO, how do I leverage things like machine learning, OAC, what version should I be in? And then the DBA is kind of worried about how am I going to get college tuition for my two kids? You know, what are they going to have me build next time? You know, what am I, what's next? So neat and looking at the converged database from the CEO's perspective, kind of wants to know where, how did I get here, first of all, with this, you know, maybe architecture, which is a lot harder to handle these days. And then the developer has many things that they can do, but sometimes it's a DBA's dilemma. And then how the converged database can really help you solve that problem. And then unifying the different data tiers as you add analytics. So first of all, data is king. You know, Gartner <laughs> drives everything. Information has replaced technology as the key asset to be managed. But as a result, you have to shift from moving from that value of information to putting it all together so you can manage different sets of data. Do it fa fast enough. You use machine learning. Boy, you have to be even faster because you access so many transactions per second and make that successful. So how did we get here? Well, developers used to build large monolithic applications using one data store and depending on what was best different databases uh, were out there that also built applications uh, over time they became a little bit difficult to manage some of the ones that were not as good uh, kind of disappeared by the ones that were really good but they weren't fast as far as changing over time and very quickly developers said hey there's applications i want to use that do very well with a graph database with an object database uh, and, and different types of things like that. But they weren't fast enough. But they re-implemented it and what happened? Well, the data started being inconsistent. So we started having 
newer databases, maybe just built, that were eventually consistent. Uh, and then you had multiple, you know, versions of that data that you had to figure out. And you had proprietary, proprietary APIs, languages all over the place. Some of those uh, led to lock-in for a given vendor. Managing it became very difficult because you had to have some unique management skills to manage such a breadth of things. And then, of course, as I said, the change propagation was inherently difficult. You can see that today. And then security may be the biggest issue. As more and more people try to break into databases and hold people hostage, this is becoming a very big issue uh, because you're managing so many data sources. And as I said, it was inconsistent as well. So what's the solution? Well, first of all, the solution is very difficult because I might have many different databases, a document database, a key value storage, a relational database, a graph database, some JSON database, column family database. They all have different consistencies, all different security levels. They all were built at different times. Some of them have evolved and they have spectacular security. Some have horrible security. So the developer loves that because I can do what I want. I can build what, you know, the business needs. But maybe it's not secure. Oh, maybe the data is not accurate. Ah, maybe some databases are better than others. So what's the solution? Well, Oracle solution is I want to give you a converged database. And we'll see how well that works for a developer as well. I said, well, basically, I'm going to give you OLTP. We've been doing that for a few decades. We do it faster than anyone, pretty much better than anyone. Uh, we've been doing analytics for close to 30 years now. Uh, we have all kinds of built-in things. Uh, and then the next generation ID, well, IoT, we've been doing that for about 20 years. Internet of Things, machine learning, just started doing that uh, maybe years back. It's not a decade ago, but for a long time. But the analytics is maybe an extension to that in some degree, to some degree. And the speed that you need in machine learning to go after billions or trillions of transactions, well, we built the architecture for that. And they also have a good job on relational structure, documents, graph, spatial, et cetera. But this is what people want. Uh, Oracle's solution, multi-tenant database, guess what? I'm not going to make you pay for it as long as you limit that to three pluggable databases in 19C. Uh, we're going to give you Oracle Analytics option, no charge. We're going to give you Oracle Machine Learning, no charge. We're going to give you Oracle Graph and Spatial, no charge. And, oh, you want to use all these different languages. You want to use Java? That's okay. GraalVM, Node.js, Python, Ruby, you name it. Angular, JavaScript, React, Oracle in 21C also puts JavaScript in the database. Uh, what platform do you want? Kubernetes, Docker, OpenShift? You make up your mind. What kind of repository do you want? Docker Hub? Is it something else? Automation tools. Some people use Jenkins, GitLab, Ansible, very big, Terraform, obviously very big, version control, Maven for a build tool, uh, schema change management, different things. All of those will work well with Oracle. So let's start there. On the development side, no problem. How about on the database side? Oh, relational? We can do that. JSON database, you have an object store, no problem. Key value, no problem. Graph, no problem. Spatial, no problem. Files, no problem. The key is to give you data liquidity at speed, reliable, scalable, and secure. So aggregating or co-locating the data is not the goal. We're not doing it for operational efficiency, although that's a massive benefit. 
we're doing it to blend the variety of data sets and answer those complex questions. And I'll go back two slides that you're building with all these different type of uh, languages, using different platforms, using different tools, using different repositories, using different version controls, however you want to do it. So you want to build a JSON database, that's okay. I can use Mongo. And Mongo did a, I think it was Mongo and uh, uh, Google that were arguing over who is faster and they built a way to compare the two and they were very close. Well, Oracle used that same comparison tool and said, well, how fast is our autonomous database? And the answer was autonomous JSON database. The answer was twice as fast and the price was half the price. So Oracle has been doing this for a while. They've been building and merging all these different things. So the CEO really likes the fact that I have a simple solution on the back end, the front end somewhat complex, but I have this way to put it. The other thing Nate and often brings up is this future data mesh that seems to be coming where basically I look at data in different places and the person who is the keeper of that data, we'll call them a unit from the Egyptian times, kind of watches over that data and, and really protects it, makes sure it's secure. And then I'm going to build this data mesh somewhere where people can access that, and consume that data. Oracle is very good for this, which is also coming as well. But what does the CEO really want? The CEO wants competitive advantage. Why does he want to give all these different tools to developers? Because they're the ones that are building applications that are giving my business a competitive advantage. He doesn't want a security problem. He doesn't want a data versioning problem, but he does want the advantages that come with a lot of tools. So he tells the CIO, hey, this is what I want. The developers get to use all these different things. You take care of the database. You take care of all this to work with the database. I want to be able to do, you know, clustering of data, forecasting of data, correlation of data, anomaly detection, all the things that come with machine learning I want that using different data sources. I want that using different development tools. Now, if I put it in Oracle, data proximity does help me. If I use Oracle, data variety, data diversity can happen as well. So it streamlines this data blending. So as I use data with other pieces of data, use tools with other pieces, Oracle very quickly allows me to do this in a very efficient manner. So with Oracle, the CEO sees this. I have, you know, that Oracle ecosystem, which I've come to know is very fast, very secure. But then I also have analytics, which has been around for 20, 30 years with all the things I need. I have scalability. If I do autonomous database, I have it on Exadata in the cloud, or I could use OCI, or I could do it on site with an Exadata as well. Oracle machine learning, no charge. And I have that Oracle database as the storage group there. So I want my CEO to fix all this for me. Hey, go take care of that. Make it happen. Now I'm the CIO. Some people will joke and say CIO stands for career is over because the average length of job for a CIO is around a little under two years. So it's very short. I got to look at, you know, what's important right now. I always say, if you want to win in the future, just remember the word win, W-I-N, and it stands for what's important now. I have to look into the future and come back in time and say, what do I have to prepare for that? Well, I'm looking at my staff and you know what? I have a lot of Oracle skilled people. Uh, they do LLTP. I have some in analytics. I have some that do a little IoT. I have some machine learning, relational, documents, graphs, spatial. I can use the skills I have with SQL and PL SQL right now 
to leverage this database and then use all those other things that developers like to use to succeed. But I have other problems. I'm the CIO. I look at this and I go, yeah, I want to leverage this and I don't want to hire somebody in each of those skills. I don't want 10 different databases going and 10 different skill sets going because there's just such a disruption happening. And I'm also worried about, well, I want the database up to date. What version should I be on before I really start attacking this database? And some of the newer things out there, auto machine learning, automatically uh, doing things Oracle that Oracle has in different products, but also the ones that I can build with machine learning in Oracle. Can I leverage the skills I currently have to do those things? Can I make sure I'm leveraging big data and IoT like my CEO wants me to do? I always look at things, and I love this image from GERD that talks about how we've gone from that, you know, mainframe on the far left there, Twilight Zone actually, there's the actual one, from using we jump to, to where that mainframe is now in your pocket. And we're going to wear it, even in planting digital. And right now you're part of the hive mind. You know, I'm sitting here on a Sunday afternoon in Chicago. You are somewhere else probably. And we look at, you know, how can we leverage this moving forward? But some jobs are just gone. I always liked how Rod Serling put it. He's looking at these telephone operators saying, you know, they used to plug in these cords to connect people and someone invented a switch. The goal was not to fight to keep this job. The goal was to find out, well, where are things going and get those new jobs? And it would say the competition between man's mind and the product of man's mind for this, they're standing room only in the twilight zone. He's saying the competition between what we can come up with, especially some type of robot, whether it's a switch or something else, and the product of, or that's the product of man's mind, and, and, and you, where do you fit into that? And I will always tell people with robotics coming, and it's coming very fast, and you'll see more of it as time goes on. The goal is, if you can work alongside robots, you become a very, very important part of that project. So some jobs are gone. I've seen articles that say autonomous database. It's going to leave DBAs unemployed. I don't think anything could be more not true. Yes, autonomous database, self-driving, self-securing, autonomous. That's kind of like a robot to me. It's a robot that's managing the database. I look at Siri and Alexa. It's a robot that does something that maybe I used to do. This is a robot that is making the CEO and CIO very happy because it's securing things. What it's also doing is freeing up my time. Data, very important. DBA, maybe the most crucial person in machine learning. If you see my talk on Thursday, you'll see how much data is part of the whole cycle of a project in machine learning. And the answer is it's 80% of the project. But I look at, is this the developer or DBA? They're moving to this robotic. I mean, how do you know something's really going to be popular? When it sells out real fast. Pepper the Robot came out, a 1,000 units sold out in one minute. Now, that was a few years ago. But in one minute, a 1,000 of them were gone. They were not inexpensive. I went up to Pepper and I said, could you tune my database? And she said or it said, it's not a he or she, they don't, it's just a robot is, is how they put it. Uh, and Pepper said, uh, I don't understand the question. And I said, good, keep it that way. And don't read my book either on tuning. But when I look at the autonomous database, self-healing, self-driving, self-tuning, self-recovering, self-scaling, puts the patch on before we even know that the database needs a patch. Wow. I mean, I want that. I need that. It'll make my job easier. Most DBAs are uh, managing way too many databases. Came out with 18C. That's what it automatically upgraded you to 19C. Made sure your queries were faster with automatic indexing. Autonomous data warehouse. Provisioning it. 
It's up and running with 18. They'll even migrate it to 19. Works with 19 now. Three minutes to start that database. That's it. Shut it down. Takes about two and a half minutes. So what does the DBA need to focus on if you're the DBA? Data administration. Not just the database, but all data. Has to be secured. Has to be protected. Maybe I can go outside of Oracle with Big Data SQL to something that's not very secure, like Hadoop, so that it becomes secure. So my users are going through the Oracle database. Oracle does that with external tables. Oh, and they let you partition those external tables. Ah, they let you do that in memory even now with the latest version. But focus on, you know, what do you want to do? How do you want to fit in this new place where you're being assisted by this autonomous database? You may manage still the most important database. That may be the most important thing. But I think something more valuable you could do is start to manage the big data and IO2 out, I, IoT out there. Make it more secure. Help people in these machine learning projects where 80% of the project has to do with the data. Maybe that's you in your autonomous DBA. You know, a copy of you, you're helping them. You set up those autonomous databases right so that you just manage them. Makes you more valuable in the future. Next thing I want to know is the CIO, before I get too deep into this, is why do I want to upgrade? Maybe I'm on 11C, 11G, 12C. I hope you're not. You really need to be at 19C because it's the long-term version. So what version I want to be is also very high up. My CIO doesn't ask me what version I'm on, but it matters to me. It matters to my developers, and you'll see why in a minute. But I want to be on that long-term version usually. Now, there may be something in 21C that's very innovative that I want to try out. But generally, I want to be on that long-term version. Here's just the database release and supported timeline. There's the MOS note for different things that you can go to at any time. And this shows me the current long-term release is 19C. And Oracle started, though, building these innovation releases where you could try things out. It has two years of premier support, no extended support. So they're generally saying, you know, you'd like to jump to the long-term release, which is currently 19C. The next one will be 23, 23C. They also, though, often backport things into the previous version. So keep that in mind. Sometimes they come out with an innovation release and people say, I need that in the long-term release, and they backport it. There are many things that have been backported to 19C uh, from both 20C, which is no longer around, but 21C. So as a CIO, before I get too far, because I see machine learning coming, I see billions of transactions coming, I say, hey, I need this to be efficient. Am I utilizing the things that are out there now, like pluggable databases? There's a lot of different data sources. Would it be nice to put those in pluggable databases just to kind of manage them? Uh, do I understand how to tune things? Uh, offset rows, fetch first row. That just says, hey, you're not tuning to get the first row. You're tuning, let's check the middle of the tables just as fast. People have kind of forgotten that sometimes if they, if they don't do any tuning. How about data redaction? Is it secure? You know, I don't want my social security numbers or other very important information being shown. I'm using those 12C with at least two features. There's all kinds of partitioning. As I get to machine learning and I get to higher volumes of data that it seems to be growing by thousands, how am I going to manage it well so it's still efficient? So I don't pay too much if I move something to the cloud because I didn't do it right. Partitioning all kinds of different ways for Oracle. And they've added things where I can partition things like Hadoop, which are in external tables. I'm using Big Data SQL to go to that NoSQL database, maybe, that I still want to use. I'm leveraging sharding so I can protect geographical information in a certain way uh, that have, you know, different privacy laws. 
Am I encrypting things correctly? These are things that are there right now for me. Have I leveraged that before I get to the, the latest version? I said I want to get to 19C because it's a long-term release, but have I leveraged things in 18C? Autonomous database and memory for external tables came out with 18C. There's an express edition I could use in 18C as well. Docker support. Wouldn't that be nice? A lot of people need that on the development side. Integration with Active Directory. That is huge if you use Active Directory. And my name, my email will be on the bottom of the slide if you need it. And there's my Twitter if you need it from time to time. Then most important, I get to that long-term version. Let's just not get there. Let's make sure we're using things. Am, am I building pluggable databases? Do I understand how to do it? You don't have to buy multi-tenant and you have three user-created pluggable databases. Automatic indexing. Oracle uses it as they upgrade you from autonomous data warehouse 18C to 19C. Maybe you want to use it. It does require Exadata though. JSON object map. Mapping. Are you doing an object database in some way? Uh, some more security here we see. A lot of in-memory things for uh, support for things like Oracle Hive. Uh, different things like REST-enabled SQL support become very important for things like Apex and accessing data in a very creative uh, way. Oracle Apex now being used by millions of people. I think the best feature in 19C was three pluggable databases. Now, why do I have to get to that in 19C? Because in 21C, it's de-supported. So after 19C, I can never not use pluggable databases. Do I need three of them? No. I just put all my information into one pl pluggable database. And Oracle will be the separate one. But the multi-tenant option is required if I have more than five, more than four user-created pluggable databases. This is a great feature because now I can compartmentalize up to three things without paying extra. I also have the ability in 19C to go to those Oracle object stores, but I could also go to Azure Blob Storage. I could also go to Amazon Object Storage on S3. Uh, all kinds of file formats, CSV, Comma separated variable that stands for JSON, Parquet, Avril. Scalable joins can actually uh, span Oracle and these data lakes as well. And then, if I want to look at that innovation version 21C, I also have a lot there. Uh, some of it has already been backported, but in database JavaScript, JSON and memory improvements, auto. Machine learning. This is pretty amazing. I'll look at that a lot on Thursday. And if you have an interest in machine learning, I would not miss that uh, talk on Thursday. A multi-tenant data guard. So now data guard is going to the tenant level. Another reason why pluggable databases are great. SQL macros, native blockchains. So you want to use blockchain. It's there. Graph performance, persistent memory, sharding, multi-tenant security, and more security enhancements. So what is Oracle? Oracle is moving forward very, very quickly. So am I using things? Some of the management features is they've made data pump better where I can import and export from autonomous database. I can include exclude objects with data pump, resume a transportable database, table space rather. Uh, can parallelize, parallelize transportable table spaces. I also, maybe I think this is one of the best features, automatically upgrade one or more databases with just one command, where it's doing that pre-upgrade and auto fix-ups. So it looks through, make sure everything is ready. We'll fix things automatically so you don't have to. Upgrades, then does a post-upgrade. Make sure it's okay. And you can fall back and retry, which is really an improvement. So am I using some of the features like Oracle Machine Learning for Pi? I can do that in 21C. Auto Machine Learning. Automatically create a notebook of machine learning for me. I actually built a notebook 
I'll show it in the later class, but it took me a couple of days. And I said, let me see if I do this with auto machine learning. I wanted to time and see five or six different uh, algorithms. I want to see which one was the best. I wanted to see if it had similar results to what I built. And so I said, auto machine learning. Let's see, two days. How fast was it? Four minutes. It had already written an entire notebook in Python. Something that took me days. So yes, as I look forward, can I use that to my advantage? Why would I want to write something if it'll write it for me? Also, things like in-memory vector joins is, is something that helps uh, if you do online gaining with millions of users. They always use in-memory vector joins. So Oracle takes advantage of that. Uh, blockchain tables we talked about. There's a central ledger where some third party takes care of this tamper-resistant ledger for you. Uh, in-memory spatial and text. Hybrid scans of the buffer cache and in-memory at the same time. So now I can go to the buffer cache and the in-memory uh, column storage at the same time in the same query, if it can use both of those. It'll also populate a VIT, compress things that are in memory. So I'm very excited about 19C, but should I ever look at 21C? Well, if I need auto machine learning. If I need the result cache for Active Data Guard, if I want to export to autonomous data, database in some way, uh, they also have a product called DataSafe that will do a security assessment of the database of all your users of your specific data. Are you securing things correctly? And then I can auto automatically do it. I went to 18C and Oracle sent me this email. Oh, we're upgrading you automatically to 19C. We're going to make sure that your 19C is as fast or faster than your 18C. But as I look at the future, if I'm a DBA, I have to think of data as the new oil. Uh, and even if I'm a developer, you know, this is where the job that I do for the company really, really matters. Oh, sorry about that. The tools I'm using, not as important as leveraging that data. It doesn't matter where it is. All that the CEO wants to make sure is, can you leverage that data in Hadoop? Can you leverage it fast enough? Can you leverage that data in a NoSQL database? Can you go through a secure portal to get it so that I don't have to worry about security? Can you make sure all the different interfaces people want to use work? with that database. And with big data, there's more data. You know that it's coming at you and it's going to come at you even faster. I mean, the volume, very large, just keeps getting bigger. Used to be not many people had a terabyte database. Now they're everybody's growing by terabytes. The value of data is different. So some data you want to treat where it has to be faster. Maybe it has to be in memory, has to be on exadata, some data not as important. The variety of data, structured, unstructured, semi-structured, log files, audio, video, text. The speed at which it's coming at you very, very fast. Can it handle things like Kafka? And the answer is yes, with Oracle I can. And there's the veracity of data. What is the truth of data? If the, maybe I'm going to big data to see, to find customers like the good ones I have, and I'm going to big data to look for more. I have to make sure that data is true as well. This is where, in my opinion, a converged database starts to really shine. Because you start to go from millions of transactions that you're maybe sorting through with analytics to trillions or billions of transactions with machine learning. Machine learning goes through the same data sometimes multiple times with very complex algorithms. I need something that's extremely fast at doing that and also secure. But we're moving, you know, when I started in Oracle, it was build me a report, tell me what happened. That quarter didn't go as well as I wanted. Then a little while later, maybe a decade later, why did it happen? Why did that quarter go so bad? And it was what's going to happen next quarter? Am I going to hit my numbers? Now it's, I need to hit my numbers. This is the number I want to hit. 
tell me what I need to do now. Prescribe to me what I need to do so that I can hit the numbers I, you know, that are possible. And this is where Oracle Exadata really comes in handy. Multi-tenant to separate these different data stores in different ways. In memory in the database, not just for data in Oracle, but that I, you know, I go to Hadoop, I can put that in memory now. I can partition it as well. Uh, real application clusters. Is it recoverable? A lot of these new databases, not as recoverable as Oracle, not as available as Oracle. Oh, if one node goes down, is it still up? Is it the same data in the other node? Partitioning, obviously, for speed. Advanced compression. What data is more or less important? Maybe I'm going to compress it more. Data that I don't go after as often. Storage indexes. Automatically tune it for me. Because we're moving to this point. This is where my CEO really wants something is he wants to leverage the data. What does he want to leverage the data to do? Well, he may have what's called supervised learning, which means you have some data currently. Let's see, I took a thousand pictures of cats and dogs and people and cars, and I scanned them in the database, and I want to do image classification. Because maybe I'm going to do an autonomous car and say, don't hit these things. Maybe I use something like Google's TensorFlow to classify those images, which, oh, by the way, Oracle works with. Or maybe I just want to classify data and identify fraud that's in the system. I could look at it internally or externally. Or maybe I want to take that data and I want to forecast that market to do prescriptive analytics or forecast even the weather. Or maybe I don't have any data. I'm just going out to somebody who can give me some data and says, here's some targeted marketing you know, people that you can go after, your salespeople can go after, but instead of giving you all age groups, I'm going to give you the age group that you know by your product currently. So I haven't taught it anything, but it's already clustered the data and says this is the piece that is probably going to use, you're probably going to use. And there's also other reinforcement learning where it does like game AI to learn things. Now, when I look at Oracle, you know, why Oracle? That's where the data is. I have the business understanding of the problem. I have to understand the data, prepare the data, model the data, evaluate the data, label the data. That takes about 80% of the project. And then deploying it with machine learning algorithms and things like that and testing those. That's about 20% of the model. So what's happening in machine learning? You know, when I go back to my CEO, what does he want to do? He just wants to find more customers like the ones I have. He, sa he says, go to big data and maybe separate good and bad customers. But what an algorithm does for me is it looks at the data I have. And it says, I'm going to separate it not by the green line, not by the blue line, but by the red line as far as humanly possible. I'm going to do that by going through some complex math. Or I'm going to look for anomalies, and I'm going to draw this circle as small as humanly possible to find the outliers. Now, they may have developed that math over 20 or 30 years to use better and better algorithms to do each of these. But with Oracle, I just need to call the algorithm. You know, why am I important? Well, my CEO wants to make sure there's no fraud. My CEO wants to go to big data and find customers that are good customers, not bad customers. How easy is it to do? Well, I can go to Autonomous Data Warehouse or Autonomous Transaction Processing, go to the Service Council, go to Machine Learning Notebooks, and automatically shows, oh, here's how you do anomaly detection. And it'll give you a notebook of how to do that. Here's how you cluster data and give you a pre-written notebook that you can learn. Oh, association rules. This is what people are buying together. Attribute importance. What's making those great customers I have? What are the attributes? Oh, they have a lot of money. Well, that's important, but maybe they're nearby. Oh, maybe they have a good supply chain where they can get the products where I get, or maybe the supply chain is very important to them that I get them what they need very fast. Uh, maybe it's 
I want to look at regression to see where my numbers are going. But Oracle has these built in. And just to show you, I talked about earlier as the CEO, I want to leverage the skills I have. A lot of, I have a lot of people that know SQL real well and C PL SQL. Well, let's see how easy it is. Well, I go into this notebook, I give it an algorithm name. And in this case, it's called support vector machine that does anomaly detection. And then I create a model, give it a name. Say I want to classify data, maybe instead of good and bad customers, that's a linear regression model. I'm just going to classify and look for anomalies. So based on customer ID, I don't, I don't want to know which ones are good or bad or how much they buy. I could have put a column in here like, you know, average sales. And I could have classified, you know, good and bad based on sales. But I want to do it with null. That means just find, find anomalies in my data. Then I go through and I do select. These are things my current guys can do. They can do selects. They, they do them all the time. And I say I'd add, add this prediction of the probability being there. And then I can graph it using this settings key, but I graphed it by years that they lived at the current residence and what makes them anomalous and based on their marital status as well. But I could change that prediction and say do it, but be the top 15 anomalous customers just by doing a SQL statement. Then I say, you know what? Give me the attributes that are making them anomalous. So let's see, what did I write? Three different SQL statements. The better my guys are at SQL, the better they'll do this. And then I access some algorithm, which was pretty simple to do. And now I'm doing machine learning very easy using 95% of the skills people have or 95% of my problem is already solved with what they know. I also can use Oracle Analytics Cloud if you've ever used this. And I can do very uh, nice way of looking at customers by different groupings, by different sales and so on. But in this case, I say just cluster them into five groups. So I'm using clustering and say group group these things into five groups based on a separation of data. It does it based on how far things are from each other. So the center of the group is in the middle based on distance of whatever you're clustering. Oracle also, though, has what's called an O cluster that does it by density. I really like this one. But this is a way that you could do it just clicking values and then doing the cluster. So I also have machine learning with this product, but it does cost. They've also put machine learning into their products. So because Oracle has a converged database, they could use all these different machine learning things, but even with their own products, whether it's manufacturing, they can look at, and you can't see it here, I'll, I'll look at it Thursday, but is there a yield problem? You know. Uh, with what's coming. Is there a supply chain problem that I'm having in manufacturing? Uh, if I'm the CFO, maybe I can say, I want to hit this number three months from now. Can you tell me what I need to do to hit this number? And I'll give you prescriptive analytics. So Oracle has put machine learning into their own products as well. And all the things you can do with Oracle. So when I look at machine learning, and as I said Thursday, I'll, I'll go through every single one of these. But what do I want to do as the CIO? I want the ability to classify good and bad customers. And isn't it great I could do that with SQL now? Can I do it with Python too? Yes. There's Oracle Machine Learning for Python. Can I do it with R also? Yes. Oracle Machine Learning for R. Can I integrate something like TensorFlow? Yes. For image recognition and neural networks and things like that. But generally, I want to classify things, good and bad customers. But I could do it eight different ways here. As of 21, so it used to be seven. A clustering. Clustering to maybe, maybe I'm looking at the election. I want to cluster people into, you know, who, how they're going to vote and see what the issue is. And, and maybe I'm going to use not distance base, which I was saying is k-means, but I might use the O cluster because certain cities are very dense I'm going to build it that way. It's a little bit better. That's Oracle only. 
Do I want to find anomalies that are out there? Do I want to find out people are buying things at a certain time? Do I want to see if I'm going to hit my numbers, regression? I want to find out what attributes are making my customers, you know, very important to me. And can I find those in big data? Association rules, what are they buying together? Feature extractions, making algorithms even faster. Just use the principal components. You know, these are ways to make things very fast. Uh, text mining. Maybe I want to look at reviews that are hand, that are written in text on the web, and I want to put those into sentiment analysis. But Oracle's also built all these analytics where you do cubes and roll-ups and all these things. It has statistical functions they built over 40 years. And again, they can use R or Python as well. But if I look at these algorithms, somebody said, you know what? I'm going to run some machine learning. I'm going to look at all the text on PubMed. These are where they, you know, people uh, publish medical documents. And they say, I'm going to look to see if anyone's talking about these machine learning things that I can use. And the answer is yes. I've read all the documents and most of them are talking about support vector machines. Well, what did we just use support vector machines for? Anomaly detection. Maybe that's what they're using them for in medical things. They want to find anomalies with your medical history or with the medical issue you have. What are they using neural networks for? Oh, that might be for image recognition, image classification. I'm going to classify this. You know, how bad is this image? Is it cancer or not cancer? And then some of the other ones. But Oracle has given me this full thing, but they added one more step, and that is automatic machine learning. So automatically, Find out which algorithm is the best algorithm. Ah, do adaptive sampling. Look at the data size. Get the training data. Fill in missing information. Denoise the data. Oh, and then tune those models. Make sure it's the fastest algorithm and tune those hyperparameters as well. And then I'm going to give you that model. In my model that took two days, it was done in four minutes doing all this. Other things that I want to leverage. Now that I'm going after billions of rows. Now, you may not have billions of rows in your system or trillions of rows, but when you use machine learning and you go through these very complex algorithms, you know, a million rows becomes a trillion rows very fast as far as, or a billion rows becomes a trillion transactions very fast to get that machine algorithm to, to go fast. So what does Oracle do to make it fast? Well, they made in memory spatial. So anything you're kind of, you want to do things with graphs, we'll make it faster. Spatial analytics and text faster. Use in memory vector joins, just like massive online gaming to make it faster. Single instruction, multiple data sets, I'll do with one CPU operation. In memory hybrid scans. Well, you're you keep going to the buffer cache. You've been doing that for years with Oracle, rather here. Looking at records at a time, that's what makes Oracle fast for on, online transaction processing. But maybe sometimes you want to sum up a whole column to do analytics. Oh, maybe you want to do both. I'm going to make it so you could go to both of those memories inside the same transaction, if that'll make it faster. And then we're going to manage that memory for you. We don't have to evict it or populate it. We know when you need stuff based on you know, what the developers are running. So in 21C, they're making it even faster. As I look at things as the CIO, I need to, you know, leverage things like virtual reality or mixed reality or augmented reality. Uh, wouldn't it be nice with a pandemic that I could show you how things will look on your bookshelf? You know, either with your iPad or through some virtual reality device. want to be able to leverage robotics. Now, I may not use, you know, the, the ro robot that's stacking boxes yet. Although if you look at somebody like Amazon, they obviously have robots in their warehouse that's constantly moving their warehouse to be more efficient. Uh, they go underneath the, the given products and they lift them up and then they move them so, they, so it becomes very efficient. 
but I may use the robot called Autonomous Database. Security issues just keep getting bigger. You know, they're going to hack my car. You know, if I don't protect my data, they're going to put me in front of, you know, the government. Say this guy needs, you need to look at this guy. Well, with Oracle, given that you use it and you leverage it, Oracle just keeps making it better. And they've been doing this over 40, 50 years. The security is there. I look at it and as the CIO and I go, you know, they used to be telling me, make sure you get big data. It's coming. Make sure you put things in memory to make things faster. Make sure you use the cloud it was coming in 2013. And then something virtual reality was coming. And then at this point, 5% of the users are using it. That's it. 5%. And then at the far right, predictive analytics, 30% were using it in 2013. And all of a sudden in 2015, it's all about robotics coming, connected home, smart robots, human augmentation. We're coming. Now, some things take a long time. Quantum computing, notice, more than 10 years in 2015. It's going to take a long time to do some of these things. Some things were coming faster. Hybrid computing coming much faster, two to five years. Virtual reality was now here. But 2018 is kind of a new reality. I'm looking at things like mixed reality, augmented reality, augment what I see maybe. Not quite at 5% of the people, but that's only in 2018. The digital twin was coming. How about you and your autonomous DBA? Oh, look at this. All of a sudden, we're getting that quantum computer. Quantum computers started being built. And notice it went from over 10 years to, oh, it's coming in five to 10 years now. And there's some that work. 2021, what you really want to know is, where am I now? Quantum machine learning, that's a ways off. But what is coming? Generative AI, AI augmented software engineering, AI driven innovation. Everything is about machine learning. Everything is about leveraging the data to, to do things for individual people. This guy, his arm is his job. This guy didn't used to be able to take a drink because he was quadriplegic. Now he can take a drink using his mind. Coming much faster. Converge database makes it so I don't have to put that in 20 different databases. And notice how many things became free with Oracle. Relational, spatial, text, Java, XML, data mining, machine learning, online analytic processing, JSON, graph. In memory, they give you up to 16 gig free. You'll see how good it is. Multi-tenant, up to three pluggable databases free. IoT streaming now free for stuff that's coming very fast at you. Blockchain free now. Oracle also, the cloud has become one of the very best with 36 regions they get up to. And this changes over time, so it may not be the very, very latest, but they're right there. Okay, so I'm going to pass it over to my DBA now. Say, okay, now it's your job. And Jim would always say, that scares the heck out of me. But he does see the converged database as this vision of the future where I have autonomous data warehouse, data warehouse, I have autonomous JSON. I do JSON database, autonomous graph, autonomous transaction processing, depending on which one I want to do. It also allows me to get all that different data in there, but I can also use REST-enabled APIs using things like Apex. Oracle has its own products that you can use, add machine learning in. But also, it's making it so the business leaders get the information they want simply. Analysts or data scientists can very quickly get what they need. The developer can use all kinds of different products as we saw earlier. Uh, as Andy would say, relational tables are just JSON documents waiting to breathe free. Uh, he just talks about how the JSON database is front and center. Half the price, twice as fast as Mongo. And then JSON will leverage 
autonomous JSON will leverage Exadata as well. So you get all the things I just showed you, indexing is very fast, JSON search indexes, partitioning on JSON key values, materialized views, typically a JSON table, uh, Exadata filters, these are the things we saw a minute ago, uh, in-memory binary JSON representations in memory. Uh, all the security things like redaction to so they don't see certain things, but also encryption and various types of encryption as well. And you can just see some of the developer tools as well there. Uh, twice as fast as AWS, uh, Document DB and MongoDB. I said earlier the Google, the G Google and Mongo, it was AWS and Mongo that were fighting over this benchmark. And then Oracle ran their stuff on the benchmark and they were twice as fast and half the price for autonomous JSON. It's also partitioned external tables, as I said, as we get the bigger and bigger data. Uh, and I can do it within memory now. Oracle Hive and Big Data, we showed that earlier. It's also these hybrid partition tables where I can partition with that external table as well and use them together. Uh, if we look at 21C, we looked at some of the new things, but it's in incorporating things like blockchain and SQL macros and JSON native data types, also giving you new machine learning algorithms. Uh, Kaggle, if you're a Kaggler like me, you do a lot of machine learning. Kaggle is a place where you can get data to play with stuff. Uh, the latest Kaggle winner, uh, uh, H, uh, XG Boost, algorithm oracle now has in 21c they also have auto machine learning in 21c which i've talked about some in-memory enhancements uh, 21c has persistent memory so now intel came out with this optane uh, chip that makes you know something between flash and dram uh, which is you know faster than flash but not quite as fast as dram where people can store their entire database in memory. And this now works very, very well. The Optane chip took a while to come out. Oracle had built this uh, prior to 21C, but the Optane chip took a little while. Uh, something to keep in mind though is 21C, as you get there, some of the features uh, you, you do, it does have to be on Exadata. Uh, and you can see how many of those require Exadata. Now, I use autonomous database. Everything is on Exadata, by the way, just to let you know. Uh, if I use uh, autonomous JSON, everything is on Exadata. The other thing that just came out not that long ago, you can see October 11th, Mike Dietrich, very good person to follow on Twitter, uh, tweeted this. But 21C came out. So now I could try all those various things like machine learning, I want to use things within memory. All those different things that maybe I don't want to purchase, I can now do uh, in the cloud. Or I could just try it on my laptop because it's available on Windows. Uh, so what should you do if you're a DBA, though? You know, Jim is the DBA here. You know, now my CEO you know, wants to leverage all this data. My CIO not only wants me on the latest version, but maybe they want me on 19C because it's a long-term version, but want to be able to try out some of the 21C. Maybe I'll do that on autonomous database. Maybe my less important uh, databases will be on autonomous database. But when you look at that DBA role, there's really a big way to innovate. Helping the business to leverage their data the DBA understands the data very well. So if I'm maybe older, 60, 65, maybe I want to stay a traditional DBA. Uh, get to 19C, obviously. It's going to take me maybe into retirement easy. Uh, but I want to get to autonomous database and start it. Those lesser databases, I don't want to upgrade them all the time. I don't want to put the patches on them all the time. I'll let, I'll let Oracle do that for me. What if I'm 50 to 59? Well, maybe I want to be a data engineer. I want to move from being database administrator to data administrator. You know, I'm going to focus on, you know, all of these different data sources and make sure they're secure, that, that the data is secure, but I want to take more of them on. I may use Big Data SQL to go to them. 
Uh, what if I'm a little younger, 30 to 49? Then I definitely want to be a data engineer. I definitely want to be able to help data scientists to get the data they need. I want them to get it very fast. Under 30, uh, we can't even imagine. As Jim would say, I'll put it in Jim, Jim speak, he's like, dude, I don't know what you're going to do. This world is changing so fast uh, that, you know, it's very difficult to predict what that is that you'll be doing in the future. So we've looked at a lot of things here. If you're the CEO, what do you want to do? Leverage that data generally. If you're the CIO, what do you want to do? Well, I want to simplify things to the degree I can. I'm going to leverage the best tools. I want that data secure. I want to make sure, and, and please put in your questions if you have any questions. But I want to make sure that data is secure. I want to make sure it's reliable. I want to make sure I don't have multiple versions of data in different places that I have to deal with. I have to make sure that my data scientists can get the data they need or make sure that data is labeled, make sure I effectively use the staff I have. Maybe I can use my current DBAs and developers by using SQL with Oracle Machine Learning, where it uses the skill they know very, very well. And then if I'm the DBA, I want to look at, to some degree, you know, am I old enough where I just need to get to the latest version and give people access to those new, new tools through an autonomous database? or in the next version, uh, make sure the system is secure? Or am I a little, little bit younger where I need to be more of a data administrator and looking at data that's you know, on S3 at Amazon or our blobs in Azure and be able to join that with Oracle data? Or maybe I'm very young and I wanna work hand in hand with data scientists to give them those pieces they need so it's very secure. Maybe I'm gonna use something like Data Mesh to do that. All right, and I'm looking at questions. I don't have any questions yet, so I'm going to go on. Uh, let's see, what question do I most often get? Uh, is the DBA going to be a thing of the past? And the answer is no. The DBA is not going to be a thing of the past, and the reason why is because data is the most important part of machine learning. It involves 80% of the process. And we'll see more of that on Thursday. But things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. So if you don't hustle, you're not going to be able to do it. It's a lot to learn. But I, I tell you, it will be very worth it as you learn, you protect the data, use a converged database. You're going to find out it's going to be a lot easier than some of the other people out there and what they have to go through. Uh, I look at Oracle, they're in their 44th anniversary. Great sales and marketing, great database, great security, BI leader, analytics leader. Now they're starting to become very good with machine learning as far as being able to leverage that. The cloud, they started growing by 70%. An autonomous database and well over 100% on the cloud side. Uh, they're gonna be hard to catch. There are some helpful links here that you have and some references. And there's a little bit about me if you want to know anything about me. I figured I'd put that at the end. <laughs> Too much to know. And with that, I'm going to pass it uh, back to Francisco. I don't know if there's any questions he has. I didn't see any. Hi, Rich. How are you? Thanks. Another excellent Thank session as always. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience with the community, not only the Asia PAC, but all around the world. Um, I cannot see any questions coming through the chat at the moment. Also through Facebook, no no questions coming through. Um, uh, people is a little bit shy, especially with the issues with the English, not the first language in many countries around here. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Uh, in your slide in the screen at the moment, everyone, you can see Rich uh, Twitter handle. You can see his email also right there in the bottom. And if you also watching the replays in the system, uh, that will be all available until December 30. 
please um, please feel free to contact Richard at any time by using his Twitter handle or his email on the screen, and he will be more than happy to respond and help you and answer all the questions you have. Th thanks, Francisco, for this really great conference. I really appreciate it. I no, I thank you so much, Richard. Thanks so much for taking the time to for us a Sunday for you uh, at night in Chicago and and please take care and be safe. All right, have a great day. You bye too. Now. Bye bye. CloudDB, shaping your new normal.